Good evening and welcome to the second programme in this series and a unique occasion in the history of this show as Ian Hislop is in the lead. In the news this week, uh, after some confusion over where the French end of the Channel Tunnel is due to emerge, crack SAS troops are brought in to find it. <laughs> after a month-long advertising campaign, the Daily Star announced they've succeeded in attracting a more upmarket type of reader. <laughs> and in Worcestershire, the world record is broken for the longest ever wait for directory inquiries. <laughs> On Ian's team, a man who, at the age of 16, represented Britain at tennis and through beating an opponent became one of the top-ranking players in the country. Uh, since then, he's fulfilled the potential people saw in him by becoming a comedian, Tony Hawks. And on Paul's side, a guest whose track record on this programme is such that William Hill's actually quoted odds of three to one that he wouldn't turn up tonight. <laughs> so he's come hot foot from the betting shop, clutching several briefcases, Roy Hattersley. So we attempt to find it in our hearts to welcome round one, our weekly mishmash of top news stories. Ian and Tony, <coughs> quick diagnosis, if you would. Right, looks like a computer. Oh, and a bit of an injury. <laughs> uh, this is to do with those virtual reality sex games you can get. Um, and that's some of the <laughs> some of the wrist injuries that you can pick up if you watch. The <laughs> it's repetitive strain injury, which um, people get when they've been on um, in jobs too long. <laughs> like the Prime Minister. Um, no, and then it went to court, and the judge um, suddenly became a medical expert and said there's no such thing as RSI, it doesn't exist. So he threw his case out. Didn't the man that was holding his cape at the back had a case of RSI? Mm. <laughs> the judge is known as Judge Prosser, which is rather amusing for those of us who like rhyming slang. <laughs> uh, yes, it is. Uh, judge John Prosser, who earlier this year ordered a rapist to pay his victim £500 for a good holiday, and has now decreed that RSI, repetitive strain injury, does not exist. Uh, one Loughborough University scientist said there has been an incredible knee-jerk reaction to the judgment. <laughs> quick knee-jerk reaction to the judge might have been more in order. Uh, RSI mainly affects anyone whose job involves repetitive wrist movement and is said to be particularly common in typists, musicians and third formers. <laughs> Uh, doctors say that it wears out the soft tissues. Yes, and let's get through several boxes of them. <laughs> Paul and Roy, a question uh, close to your conscience. Um, Look at that wrist movement. <laughs> uh, pay rise, isn't it, amongst it's, them things? It's all the money we're getting. It's what we all stayed up for on Wednesday night to make sure we've got another £2,000 a year. And worth every penny of it. <laughs> so you voted for it, did you, right? I wasn't there. I never t didn't mm. turn up, actually. <laughs> <laughs> so you're getting what? 5% yeah. over the next two years? No, no. you can call it 5% over the next two years. Or you can call it 4.97% over the last three years. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Uh, you could call it rather more than the rest of the public sector, couldn't you? <laughs> or, or since it's £32,000 a year, you could call it less than anybody else on this panel earns. Quite right, too. <laughs> I quite like to pitch in with an objection to that one. I <laughs> but that's only but, part but, of your income, Roy, isn't there? But it's like There's the a, Guardian a half. and half. But that's live. Only a half. <laughs> part. Oh, part. Come on, sorry. Come on. You know when you didn't turn up last time? Where? Here. But I thought to be here before. Yeah. You, ne you never guess what we did. <laughs> <laughs> It was a, Did you hear about uh, it? It was a terrible disappointment to me, because I thought we were going to get a great barrel with staves. Well, you're here now, anyway. Oh, right. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yes, several hours ago, you may remember I asked a question. <laughs> Uh, it is the, uh, the Commons debate in which uh, MPs voted on how large a salary increase should be given to uh, MPs, uh, rather like allowing George Best to pour his own drink. <laughs> <laughs> Max Madden, Labour MP for Bradford West, said any increase should be limited to those MPs with no outside financial interests, or the Labour Party as they're known. <laughs> uh, or, or perhaps not, right? <laughs> uh, Ian and Tony, another bargain winter sale for you. 
uh, Houses of Parliament. It's not the pay rise again, is it? Shipping up late. Uh, oh, there's British Rail after it's privatised. Yep. <laughs> Someone trying to strangle Ian McGregor. <laughs> well, it's to do with them sitting up uh, in Parliament last night or whatever about this privatising the railways bill. It's a silly bill that they haven't done a U-turn on. Roy knows the all this, don't you? The Lords. The Lords through. wouldn't let it through. And, then and they, they stayed up all night and then went and home. And put it back and it went back again and then... Yes, I didn't yes, realise it was such a political programme. No. no it's, mm. it's always like this. Well, I've, do, I've done me best to try and oh. steer it away from it. <laughs> I'm quite happy to come on and play the spoons. And I can't <laughs> oh, we're much more interesting in all this political yeah, stuff. Yeah, we do not care about all that privatised room. You well, little monkeys. You may, <laughs> you may well have to play the spoons by the end of the evening because uh, <laughs> the government quashed a rebellion on its own back benches by making sure rebels couldn't attend the vote. One MP was sent to Peru so he wouldn't get back to London for a week. Be our day return to Manchester would have done that. <laughs> uh, Paul and Roy, what little domestic tiff is this? Oh, they're making a soap advert. Mm. Mm. It's, uh, yes. it's fathers, it's... Yes. Who aren't there. They are mm. there on the street, mm. but they aren't there in reality. That's so right, yeah. Child maintenance. They sort of said, well, f missing fathers must pay for their uh, family's uh, support and stuff, but because the fathers were missing, they couldn't find them, and so the fathers they have found have made them pay four times the amount. To make up, <laughs> to make up the number they can't find. Right, mm. right. And they end up paying more than they actually earn, these fathers. It's, uh, it's a staggering answer because it's completely right. Uh, well, don't hide your disappointment. <laughs> I can't, I'm afraid. It's, it's genuine. It's a new look you've got, isn't it? Are you trying to the jacket or the tie? Oh, is that a tie or a jumper? I can't tell. <laughs> it used to be a jumper, I think. Oh, it used to be a jumper. Mm. And then it became a tie, magically. <laughs> it's fucking rubbish now. You're wearing rubbish. <laughs> Um, it is that rare uh, beast, a government U-turn, which is about to remove powers from the Child Support Agency to penalise absent fathers. So effectively, John Major has now abandoned his own brainchild. I wonder if the agency can get him for that. Uh, since the CSA was set up, maintenance payments... Do we have, have to jumped. listen to all this running? I've <laughs> <laughs> well, answered the question. What's no. all he's turning into a mini-series or something? <laughs> maintenance uh, payments the movie. <laughs> You can sleep through these bits like you and normally And what's the stuff about John Major's brainchild? Yeah. That's a contradiction in terms. <laughs> um, well, what was I talking about? Really? Oh, yes, the answer. Yes, um, the answer which we've already given you, and you're now yeah. repeating. Since the uh, CSA was set up, maintenance plate... We don't care! <laughs> we don't care! <laughs> You're not interested, are you? Has anyone got a couple of spoons <laughs> on it? <laughs> Could be more entertaining. Um, Where were you? Uh, I was here, right? Oh, yeah. <laughs> the agency has been attacked for failing in its uh, intended aim of tracing runaway this goes on much longer. <laughs> <laughs> this programme will be going out live. <laughs> but you see is. people saying, oh, let's switch BBC Two on. There's all that income support stuff that I want to hear about. Uh, the agency has been attacked for... Uh, <laughs> uh, are you, uh, is, uh, are you in this, this speech for the Booker Prize? <laughs> <laughs> It's I'm beginning to realise why I didn't turn up. Like <laughs> no, it was a lot easier with the tub of lard sitting there. <laughs> didn't interrupt once. Uh, the agency has been attacked. <laughs> oh, uh, for, um, no, I can't bring myself to do it. <laughs> and at the end of that uh, opening skirmish, the familiar and comforting news is that uh, both teams are boasting a full quotient with Ian and Tony and Paul and Roy sharing a joint four. <laughs> and uh, so to the baffling phenomenon that is round two, four literally absurd headlines from the seedy side of Fleet Street. Paul, what bestial nonsense is this? Sobering news for hamsters. Oh, this is an experiment they did. They, they got a load of hamsters drunk. Um, took them around all the sort of fashionable night spots, <laughs> got them very drunk, and then they gave them this sort of, I think it's a sort of Chinese herb or something, which immediately, immediately gives you non-pissed hamster. <laughs> you, 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 you give it to the hamster, and it immediately stops singing rugby songs and <laughs> expressing a desire to go for an Indian meal. <laughs> and you think it might work on humans? Because yes. hamsters are prone to alcoholic abuse because <laughs> they've got these huge cheek pouches, which means they can carry back lots of beer from the off-license. <laughs>
Uh, yes, it is uh, it's the experiments into alcoholism going on at Harvard uh, with the aid of some Syrian golden hamsters whose tastes are all the more remarkable considering that they're offered simply a mixture of pure ethanol with water, whereas most hamsters, of course, prefer it with bitter lemon. <laughs> uh, the scientists at Harvard University say they've been searching for some years to find spontaneous drinkers. If they'd been at Glasgow University, they wouldn't have had much trouble. <laughs> Still not a bad life for a hamster, though. I mean, if it's either that or being owned by Richard Gere. Uh, <laughs> Roy, um, a criminal That's about 350 you. grand, I reckon. Mm -hmm. <laughs> oh, just That's cool. a lot to pay for a hamster. <laughs> <laughs> Depends what it does. Mm. Roy, a, uh, a criminal tale for you. Thieves put spoke in wheels. This is a new sort of bicycle thief who will stop cutting the chains and taking the bicycles away. He's actually gone around mending the bicycles. <laughs> um, um, and this appeared yes. in the Tooting Gazette on Monday morning, mm. on page seven. Mm. <laughs> well, it's going to just, be just about the advert for the Taj Mahal Indian restaurant. <laughs> and the warning that hamsters were not going to be welcome this coming week. <laughs> it is uh, one of the most precise answers we've ever been given on this programme. Um, and it may well be true, but it's not actually the answer that I've got <laughs> written down in front of me. Uh, any idea over here? Uh, I think Roy was right. Because I got the Tooting uh, Gazette that week as well. Yeah. <laughs> uh, well I've often thought the Tooting Gazette was scandalous and neglected on this programme, haven't yeah. I? Yes, well, now it's getting a hell of a plug, isn't it? <laughs> <laughs> it is, uh, I'll tell you what it is, it's a new public transport scheme in Cambridge. Uh, oh, to... yeah, for bicycles, isn't it? They've given their free bicycles and they're painting them green. And they're and all, any, and all any... pinch in a week. That's right. Anybody want... the, the idea was anybody who wanted a bike, because there was lots of bikes being stolen, so the council got hold of a load of old bikes, painted them That's green, right. and they left them around Cambridge yep. and said, if you want a bike, have a bike, have, the, have your ride, and then leave the bike somewhere, and then we'll come and pick it up. I remember reading about it in the Tooting Gazette. Tooting Gazette. <laughs> <laughs> uh, the reasoning behind the plan uh, was that it would reduce cycle theft. Well, it certainly succeeded. There aren't any left to steal. <laughs> uh, Councillor Jackie Galway defended the scheme, saying, even if it doesn't work, we have still got more racks and signs to put information on. Yes, such as, sorry, no bikes. <laughs> uh, Tony, an everyday uh, problem for you. Premature ejection. Uh, yes, uh, this is uh, an article about appalling spelling at schools. <laughs> uh, I think I know what it is. It's, um, it's about uh, a US pilot who was flying over Turkey on the way to Iran, I think. And he sort of pressed for the air hostess for some tea or something. <laughs> and he pressed the ejection button instead. And uh, it all went horribly wrong for him. Mm. <laughs> uh, yes, it is the sad case of Lieutenant Colonel Don Snellgrove, was his name, uh, of the US Air Force, who crashed his 12 million pound jet as a result of trying to fly the plane and have a pee at the same time. <laughs> the uh, official procedure for desperate pilots, which uh, Snellgrove was attempting to follow, is to urinate into a sponge. It's not clear whether that's homemade or one of Mr. Kimpling. <laughs> um, Snellgrove parachuted to safety with his trousers still awry and his navigator followed suit. Considering their state of undress, it makes you wonder about the phrase Roger and out. <laughs> Ian, a uh, graphic image for you. Saddam Smears Charles. <laughs> this was um, a retaliatory strike by Saddam. Mm -hmm. because Charles made one of his many speeches and they said that Hussein is, is not really a very nice bloke. Mm. Which is very controversial, obviously. <laughs> anyway, Saddam read this because he gets the telegraph. Right? Well, I it's thought he was in a tooting gazette. <laughs> no, that's right. <laughs> anyway, Saddam made a speech attacking Charles, saying, I won't be lectured on morality by a man who commits adultery. Um, which is an interesting bit of moral relativism. I mean, <laughs> equating Rogering Camilla Parker Bowles with gassing the Kurds. <laughs> anyway, so Saddam's had a go at a member of the royal family, which is our job. <laughs> Bastard. Mm. <laughs> it's, uh, it's the news that Saddam Hussein's son, Uday, uh, writing in an Iraqi newspaper, has launched a scathing attack on the personal morality of Prince Charles, uh, the article claimed that Prince Charles is a notorious playboy, well known in whorehouses throughout Europe. <laughs> but only the ones with nice gothic arches and Georgian pillars. Uh, in I think he meant warehouses, didn't he? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. In 1989, Saddam's son spent several weeks in jail after clubbing to death in a drunken frenzy his father's favourite valet. Several weeks. 
Why so long? Uh, I always wondered what it would take to make Robert Maxwell look like a nice guy to have running your paper, and a day seems to be it. Which, uh, insane... You know, it's two years today since, since Maxwell went overboard. You look rather upset by that. I am. <laughs> I know a lot of people think of November the 5th as Guy Fawkes Night, but I think of it as Maxwell Drown Night. <laughs> so if you want to join me in a little celebration later, <laughs> I'll be running my bath. <laughs> well, I wouldn't mind if... Uh, <laughs> uh, which uh, insane ramblings marks the end of this uh, particular round. And the near uh, entertaining situation is that uh, Paul and Roy are beginning to struggle with seven, whilst Ian and Tony are strolling on with eight. And so it's time to give way to the dubious pleasure of entering our odd one out round for Happy Songbirds, which is the George Michael. Uh, Paul, consider these. Mikhail Gorbachev, Robert De Niro, Stephen Norris, MP, and Boy George. Um, they've all been considered for the lead role in Bag Puss the Movie. <laughs> Is there paternity suits or something? Um, mm. Somebody said uh, recently accused Gorbachev of uh, fathering her child. De Niro, I think, has had the same story. Boy George has just rather implausibly been accused of the same thing. <laughs> and Stephen Norris, MP, hasn't. Hasn't. Uh, <laughs> yes, it is. Uh, it is Stephen Norris, MP, who's uh, the only one not to be accused of fathering a love child, despite having at least five mistresses exposed by the press. Uh, Peter Ashton, the chairman of Norris's local Conservative Party, said his personal life is his own. On the contrary, it seems to involve almost everyone he meets. <laughs> <laughs> Boy George this week has been accused of fathering an American child, although the singer claims uh, that he's not had penetrative sex since leaving school. Strange thing to do on your way home from school. <laughs> Roy, for Lords of Leaping for you. Lord Renton. Lord Buckethead. <laughs> Oliver Cromwell, Lord Protector, and Lord Helpers, John Major. <laughs> something to do with Huntington, but I don't know what, because Hen Renton, the only thing we know about Renton, I know about Renton, is remember for Huntington. Mm -hmm. And John Major has a Huntington connection. I think Cromwell came from Huntington, and Lord Buckethead didn't. <laughs> Yes, two excellent oh, points. Lord well done. Well done. It's, uh, it's Lord Buckethead who, uh, in spite of fighting the seat, is the only one not to be elected MP for Huntington. Uh, it's, more of a, it's not a really a bucket, it's more of a pipe, isn't it? <laughs> did Lord Buckethead stand against John Major? Yes, he did. And they elected John Major. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Oliver Cromwell was MP for Huntington, and even today there are Cromwell Arms, Cromwell Inns, and so on, uh, all over the town. Although, interestingly, no King's Heads. A, uh, a Guardian journalist on a visit there recently said the only picture of John Major was in the window of an Indian restaurant, presumably as an illustration of what a sag prawn looks like. <laughs> uh, uh, Tony, for variations on a theme for you. Claire Rayner, <coughs> Francois the Fish, <laughs> Sammy Davis Jr. and Gordon Banks. Oh, dead easy. Um, <laughs> I've got a bit of a theory that this is to do with wings. Um, just, that yeah. fish appears to have wings of some description, and Claire Rain is involved with a commercial oh. to do with wings. Mm -hmm. And Sammy Davis Jr. is a tap dancer, and so, you can wing it when you're this tap dancing. And Gordon Banks is the other one out because he played in goal and not on the wing. Pauling yeah. Robert. <laughs> Pauling Robert. I think that's it's one of the side. worst answers I've ever heard. <laughs> Gordon Banks, because of a car crash, has now only one, one good eye. Sammy Davis Jr. had only one eye. We can assume that fish has only got one eye. Why? And there's uh, one on the other side. How yeah. do you know? We don't know that. <laughs> How can we judge? Well, hang on, you don't know that Gordon Banks hasn't got one round the other side of there, either. <laughs> be handy for corner kick. Would, wouldn't it? <laughs> <laughs> so Claire Rain is the odd one out because she is uh, duo optical. Yes, yes, I'm prepared to... Uh, duo to... optical. <laughs> it is uh, Claire Rain, as all the others, wear glass eyes, uh, whereas she merely collects them. Uh, zoologists at Liège University are claiming a first after fitting a tropical fish with a glass eye. Asked why, they replied, fish can't wear glasses. <laughs> 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 Nothing gets past these Belgians. 
former England goalkeeper Gordon Banks, who wears a glass eye, was recently banned from receiving cup final tickets, but then a pile of them was discovered under a paperweight on his desk. He said he was just keeping an eye on them for a friend. <laughs> oh. <laughs> um, and uh, finally in this round, Ian, for formerly influential Prime Ministers, now consigned to the dustbin of history. Edward Heath, Lloyd George, Harold Wilson, and... John Major. <laughs> Looks like he's about to do a song there, doesn't he, John Major? What kind of fool am I? Mm. <laughs> this is another sex question, or rather uh, a sex allegation question. Mm -hmm. Lloyd George was well known to know a lot of people's fathers. Was this boy George his son? <laughs> <laughs> uh, uh, hurry up with who the old one out this, because it's obviously Edward Heath, isn't it? What, because there was no, no suggestion well, of any impropriety? Well, yeah, no one was interested. <laughs> so everyone apart from Edward Heath has been sort of subject of allegations that's of it. having uh, sexual relations that's with an employee of theirs. And that's us, we've done it. Yeah. Yeah. With an employee? <laughs> John Major's the only one with the sun in his eyes. <laughs> that's another Lloyd George is the last one to resist the move to colour photography. <laughs> I'll give Paul a couple of marks. I think he did get it right. The answer is that all of them have uh, received damages uh, over allegations that they had a mistress, except Ted Heath, uh, who is, of course, both single and a keen sailor. Um, <laughs> which uh, constituent parts hold uh, the end of another odd one for this week. And the story so far is that, uh, well, Ian and Tony look to be down and out with nine, while Paul and Roy are up where they belong with 15. And so we spring eternal into our final missing words round. Two swatches of sensational headlines, each with an offending part tastefully removed. Guess the part, or parts, and the points are literally in the bag. For added confusion this week, uh, we've decided to throw in a couple of headlines from Wild About Animals magazine, just for the sheer joy of it. So, uh, Ian and Tony, you're uh, currently flailing at the moment, so uh, you get to start with Lamont has new what? Off-licence. Uh, kid on the block. <laughs> New idea about how the economy was going right all along. All right. uh, it is in fact Shiner, a new Shiner. Ah, right. uh, what's uh, delayed until 2005? Next year. <laughs> High speed link. High speed link. Recovery. Um, Premature ejection. <laughs> High speed link. I'll give, you, ejection. I'll give you one for that. Tunnel link is in fact the answer. Uh, next, Diana wants a what? Good talking to. <laughs> Is the polite answer? No. Chat show. <laughs> Good seeing too. Nice. <laughs> um, that's the rude answer. Um, what's English? a new detective? She wants a role. Uh, I thought that's what you meant. <laughs> <laughs> no, a reconciliation is in fact the what uh, rubbish. Is the answer. Uh, next, queens move in on what? Earl's court. <laughs> <laughs> Chessboard? Oh. Jason Donovan. <laughs> <laughs> no, that's, uh, that's plainly not true, is it? No. Um, <laughs> the, uh, I am sorry, I meant to say Elton John. <laughs> my my <laughs> tongue just... I don't think you did, um, if you want to uh, stay this side of uh, a quarter of a million pounds. <laughs> uh, Queen's no, that was about his bulimia, it's very, mm. which he doesn't have. No. And very silly of the mirror to say so. Mm. It cost them £350,000. You see, bulimia does exist as a disease. RSI, if you sue your employer, because you've got a bad back, you get absolute bugger all, because the judge doesn't believe you. Mm. If you're Elton John, you get 350 grand. I don't understand the problem oh, with bulimia. Bugger. You eat, you vomit, you eat again. I mean, it sounds like a good life to me. <laughs> <laughs> Do you want to know the answer to this question? No. no. Uh, I'll tell you what it is. Queens move in on kittens. There we are. That's from uh, Wild About Animals for you. Uh, <laughs> is it a magazine that you get weekly, Angus, this one, Wild About Animals? Um, not weekly. No, because no, it comes out every fortnight. Does so it? I, it still gives know. you repetitive strain injury. <laughs> depends, uh, depends which animals are in that week. <laughs> Um, do they have, do they have pin-ups? <laughs> like a sort of cheeky little cocker spaniel. <laughs> you can take me for a walk any day. 
And lastly, major promises fresh. What? Air. <laughs> is not true. Halibut. Skate. Are we still in the animal mag? <laughs> <laughs> no, we've moved Initiative. out of that. Initiative. Ulster Initiative, in fact, oh, okay. the answer. But as you're behind, I'll give you a couple. Right, thank you. Paul and Roy, here are your teasers. A uh, disused power station by the Thames could be turned into what? A rabbit. A a extension, <laughs> extension to Tate Gallery. Uh, yes, I'll give you the Tate Gallery. It could be turned into a power station, couldn't it? Right. Be new. Horse no. teeth depot, something like that. Got it. <laughs> Privatised got train. It. Interesting idea, people get, trying to get it after they got the right answer. <laughs> <laughs> um, next, who tend to have different bills? Puffins and sparrows. <laughs> It's, it sounds like a gentleman's outfitters, doesn't it? Puffins and sparrows, waistcoats of the gentry. Um, a bit like it. Isn't it? It's um, different sort of phone consumers, Mercury and British Telecom. They get different sort of bills because one's Mercury and one's British Telecom. Uh, it's a good answer. You're closer with the first one because it's actually oyster catchers. <laughs> Next uh, winner. Yes, I found what? Underpants. <laughs> yes, I found my own true love. It's myself. New love is in fact the... Uh, it's funny how he finds a new love every time he's got a film coming out. Mm. Is that libelous? Mm. No. Oh. Trust me. <laughs> <laughs> well, uh, in that case, yes, it is funny how that always happens. Uh, next, Rifkin fends off what? Uh, Brazilian transsexual. <laughs> we met him at a party, you won't leave him alone. This is, um, uh, not unless you know something about Virginia Kenneth Clark. Virginia Bottomley? Yeah. Defence cuts. Um, <laughs> yes, defence cuts was the nearest. Uh, Clark Axe is in fact the answer, it's and not finally, very near <laughs> not really, not no. I'll take Edward up the what? <laughs> uh, junction? Kyber. No, no, Job no. centre. Bridal path. <laughs> Arsenal. <laughs> um, were you sneezing? Yes, yeah, all right. Oh, yeah. <laughs> uh, astonishingly, yes, yeah, bridal path is precisely the right answer, right. Uh, which uh, suggestive behaviour... You don't think he was a horse. Was that? Oh. <laughs> Uh, which suggested behaviour... might end up as a pin-up in Wild About Animals. <laughs> uh, which uh, odd behaviour brings us to the uh, undignified conclusion of not just this quick-fire round, but also the whole shooting match. And the tragic <laughs> outcome is that this week's utter nightmares are Ian and Tony with 13, and this week's absolute dreams are Paul and Roy with 21. <laughs> So a bunch of flowers to our winners, a bunch of fives to our losers. And I leave you with news that East End police cells are full tonight after a riot at the Gary Bushell look-alike contest. <laughs> uh, rush hour commuters adjust to the first day of British Rail's new autumn schedules. <laughs> and finally, after Ken Livingston wins London's top newt breeding prize, competitors allege that his entry may have been bred using steroids. Good night. <laughs>